Travis Wingoods. I, with the assassination of Joseph Smith, there was a church conference held in August, and uh, Sidney Rigdon spoke. He uh, suggested to the crowd that uh, he uh, lead the Mormons as a uh, overseer rather than a, as a president. <coughs> Lucy Mack also spoke, the mother of Joseph Smith and Hiram, and uh, hers was an emotional plea. She wasn't trying to run the church. And then Brigham Young, and that was it. Brigham Young would uh, later be written about in those who followed him to the Salt Lake Valley in their journals that uh, they remembered uh, hearing the voice of Joseph Smith or seeing Joseph Smith and his countenance or, or feeling Joseph Smith or whatever crap all to try to legitimize the authority of Brigham Young. And uh, that's not Joseph Smith's manner of succession. Such claims are not proof of succession. That's why they're crap. Because section 107 verse 22 is very clear how succession was supposed to work after Joseph Smith died. And it's uh, something that nobody's ever followed, especially Brigham Young's church. And so hopefully you understand why Brigham Young set up his administration the way he did. It's because Brigham Young was the president of the Twelve. And so we patterned succession after him as president of the Twelve, succeeding to become president of the church. It's not complicated, and yet too many Mormons get caught up thinking that that was Joseph Smith's process. No, it wasn't. <clears throat> so, in, uh, on November 6, 1832, Joseph Smith III, to the second power, was born in Kirtland, Ohio. And if you don't know, because you hadn't found out from any other source, let alone me, the original Joseph Smith III died as an infant, uh, right there in the summertime when Joseph Smith was uh, working with Martin Harris to distract him into thinking he was helping with the Book of Mormon. And then Martin took advantage of the death of Joseph Smith III and stole the 116 pages and <coughs> there were later claims that uh, it was Martin Harris's wife who was to blame. And that was not the case because it's recorded by Joseph Smith that Martin Harris was the wicked man. He's not the wicked man if his wife stole the documents. And so you need to know real church history that Martin Harris was a part of the uh, um, Palmyra Committee of Anti-Masons and uh, how it uh, concerned him with what was written because Joseph Smith Senior was a York Rites Mason and a Master Mason at the Lodge of Canandaigua, New York, where he was working with William Morgan on the publication of a book until 9 11, 1826. So, those facts of history must be included before making any conclusions 
about what you think church history is about. But anyway, and so I, the Wikipedia page uh, leaves out key information. Uh, and so they talk about in 1838 uh, about Joseph Smith was arrested partially as a result of the events in the 1838 Mormon War. No, primarily as a result, the 1838 war was the election fraud scandal of the Danites, who used Adam Diamond as their headquarters of uh, Newell K. Whitney that you uh, hear about in uh, section 117 <coughs> as a Danite conspirator. And, uh, and so 116 is also fraudulent as a document, but 117 reveals uh, why it's a fraudulent document. It's because the Danites of Brigham Young had purposely put that in there to rig the scriptures against Joseph. But uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, it then says, uh, in 1839, Joseph and Emma left Missouri with his mother and siblings and moved to Quincy, Illinois. It's because of the Governor Boggs extermination order because of the Danites causing the 1838 Mormon War with election fraud. So, yeah, there's a lot of missing information from the Wikipedia page on the matter. So he was only 11 years old when his father died. And, uh, and so he wasn't old enough to know Joseph Smith's church, to know that it was Jewish, not Jesus Christian. And uh, so if we scroll down, uh, there were a number of people who were trying to promote him, Joseph Smith III, to be the successor just because they didn't like Brigham Young, didn't agree with his authoritarianism. <coughs> and uh, didn't go with Brigham Young westward. Nonetheless, I... other research videos to do for you guys I see here and it looks like I can get back to doing long research videos for you guys now that I have faster internet regular fast internet so yeah I was having trouble finishing all of the f blanks that need to be filled in on the videos that I was uploading yesterday as uh, the videos were already finishing up and ready for me to publish before I was finished. So anyway, reorganization of the church. Western saints began to call for the need to establish a new organization. Uh, and it's the restoration of the church. Alpheus Cutler was one such person, uh, believing Joseph Smith when he talked about uh, the latter days, but wanting to interpret it as being in their day and time period. And so Alpheus Cutler, for example, started his own church based on uh, a sign in the heavens that he claimed Joseph had told him. And I've 
done the video about that sign. But uh, uh, let's see. It's not until 1860 when Joseph Smith III said that he had received this inspiration to start his church. And at a conference in Amboy, Illinois on April 6th, 1860, <coughs> he formed the reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so you need to know, because they did not put it here, that uh, uh, he had come to this valley as uh, uh, 60 is quite a number of years away from 44, as he was too young to know anything about Joseph's church, let alone Judaism, let alone Jewish Kabbalah, let alone Egyptian. And uh, Brigham Young had changed it all to Christian with Jesus, with the symbol of Lucifer. The inverted pentagram that Isaiah talks about, that's in the Book of Mormon too, for the great and abominable church. But uh, uh, he had gone to see how Brigham Young had been running his church. And that's when he came back and was inspired for the restoration of the church through him. And so I. Uh, uh, he did not do it by proper authority. It was not done according to section 107, verse 22. And so as much as uh, Lucy, or not Lucy, Emma Smith also claimed that uh, Joseph Smith said on his deathbed that her, their son would take over the church. Uh, none of that holds any legitimacy. Because the fact of the matter is, is that when Joseph Smith died, so did his church. And so everyone else who claims succession from Joseph Smith are liars. <laughs> Liar! I'm a witch. No, I'm a wife, not a witch. <laughs> After what I just heard, I'm not sure I want to be that anymore. <laughs> So, anybody want a peanut this morning? So, uh, that's important to understand because you can see with the naming of the church by putting in Jesus Christ, he knew nothing of Judaism. He knew nothing of Kabbalah and uh, had fallen prey to Brigham Young's trap that that was the name of Joseph Smith's church, his father's church because he was only 11 years old when his father died. And uh, uh, it seems clear that Joseph Smith was not teaching Joseph Smith III about his church or anything like that. For uh, Joseph Smith III to follow Brigham Young's pattern rather than his father's uh, teachings. And so, uh, as a result, the community of Christ, now that they're called, uh, have used Christianity and Jesus to interpret the Book of Mormon. <coughs> and uh, uh, other uh, writings of Joseph Smith. And so when uh, the uh, community of Christ wanted to become full Christian, uh, they had to uh, downplay the Book of Mormon as part of that. I uh, at least used to have a community of Christ followers. Uh, if uh, you guys are still following, please give a shout out so that I know you're still there. But. Uh, uh, as it is for Mormons, as it is for ex-Mormons, it's difficult to listen to uh, my information because the concept of 
a Jewish Kabbalistic interpretation of Joseph Smith's writings is foreign and unknown, and thus it's scary and of the devil and, and uh, not true. Jesus is true, but uh, I hope uh, that my inspiration to do this video, as I was unable to get further sleep, sleeping in the tub is the only place I can sleep, and I can only get two hours of sleep in there, assuming that's when I fall asleep. And, but. Uh, yeah, I'm going on four hours in the two nights here that I've been here. And so, I, yeah, I, I hope that helps you to understand is uh, don't rely on people's word for things. You need to know the original primary source documents and uh, put things into context, you know, who said it, why did they say it, when did they say it, so that you can know their motives and intentions, because uh, there's too many ex-Mormons who trust Danite journal writing, not understanding of the Danite threat that they still pose to this day. So, uh, I guess that's that's it. Just wanted to let you know about Joseph Smith III and why he's not the legitimate successor. So if you are wondering, uh, since nobody followed the true succession that Joseph Smith had set out, what then are we waiting for with a restoration? that Joseph Smith did talk about and others used to justify their starting their own church. Uh, you can't go off of that alone either. But that's the majority of the people who have started their own church was that process. <coughs> and I've been showing you from the learning of the Jews of Numbers chapter 12 verse 6 because the future Christ for all of Mormonism, which includes you too, ex-Mormons, even though you want nothing to do with Brigham Young's church, but you've assumed that it's Joseph's church, because you're interpreting Joseph through the lens of Brigham Young's Christianity, which is completely warped, as I mentioned. That, uh, I, I, he's supposed to be a man like Moses and then Joseph Smith says that he would be a Mormon from Brigham Young's church the great Mormonal church to save and free Mormons who would hearken unto his voice and so that's a big difference from a Christ who does all the work for you to save you, comes down out of space, smites the wicked, and you go merrily on your way, skipping and frolicking to Zion, <laughs> to live in peace and harmony under, under Jesus. No, it's a big difference. The, the uh, pressure is on Mormons to actually search for him as a mortal man after the manner of the Jews and among the Mormons, according to Joseph Smith, of the Brighamite branch, not the Joseph Smith the third branch, and hearken to him to save their lives. But uh, I can assure you, Mormons are not hearkening to him and are fulfilling Joseph Smith's prophecies that he had written uh, in section 45, for example. Uh, there's also section 101, starting in verse 43, that parable, that's about the latter days, that's a prophecy. And the Book of Mormon likewise has prophecies of the Mormon. 
that are unique from the Bible. And so, yeah, when you use the lens of Jewish Kabbalism, uh, you would learn that. That was originally going to be my video as uh, I was trying to sleep on the floor here. Four hours and two days is just not enough sleep. And I couldn't sleep here on the floor anyway. No, get, uh, mm, mm. So, uh, yeah, he would be uh, someone like Joseph Smith who had visions. The Joseph Smith visions, which Brigham Young made sure to call them literal history, which ex-Mormons complain about because of all the problems by calling them literal history and uh, making alterations of the text to make everybody assume that it's the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints rather than the Church of Latter-day Saints as it was original. And you can learn this for yourself by going through the Joseph Smith papers, even though I'm the one who has to show you the picture of it, the snapshot. So, yeah. He's supposed to fulfill all the prophecies, and you should be able to get a, a checklist going, as the scribes for King Herod had, as uh, the author of Matthew did. He wrote his apocalyptic literature, because it's a Jewish text, so you're not supposed to use Christian interpretation on a Jewish text. So they're not the Gospels. They are the Apocalypse of Matthew, the Apocalypse of Mark, the Apocalypse of Luke, the Apocalypse of John. Even though, because of what Constantine did with his creation of Christianity, he separated the books into Gospels and Apocalypses. So in Matthew, for example, uh, the Apocalypse of Matthew is considered to be Matthew chapter 24 and 25. And the rest of it is considered literal history. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, once you understand that, then you understand that there are other scriptures that are supposed to be included. And it's not about more commandments to obey, as the church wants you to believe, as the Brighamite church wants you to believe. There are more prophecies about this Latter-day Christ, whom Joseph Smith says would be a Mormon and is after the learning of the Jews, which means he's a mortal person. He's not going to have magical powers. He's just going to talk to you. And you have to hearken to him. That's so hard. Why can't you just smite the wicked <laughs> and save us? Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God <laughs> and save us. <laughs> Prophecy. So, you know, really need sleep. And I'm not going to get sleep. Because uh, I had confirmed, had it confirmed to me last night. Because as a scientist, that's what I always do with everything in my life, not just my research in anthropology, which is what I use to research LDS church history. <coughs> but, uh, as uh, I told you in yesterday's video, that uh, they were going to betray me and abandon me to pay March's rent, which is going to ruin me financially. Yeah, I got confirmation that that's exactly what they're doing. So, so I have arranged for movers that they claim the people who've betrayed me had claimed that they're going to pay for the move. Uh, but uh, with all the betrayals they're doing, wouldn't surprise me at all if I get betrayed again with the move. But uh, nonetheless, notwithstanding, it's tomorrow when the movers will are booked for coming to 
help it. And so it's going to be a, hmm. I'm already in the apartment, which means I have to travel UTA, which is an hour and a half to get to my storage unit and an hour and a half to get back. And that means that the, the uh, movers are going to be waiting for about an hour for me to return to let them in the building. Everybody thinks they know what's best by abandoning me and betraying me. But it just causes more problems. So, anyway, I'm, I think I'm just rambling now. This video is supposed to be just about Joseph Smith III. But in the general sense of succession, and since there is no, was no proper succession, then I'm sure that was the first question on everybody's mind is, well, then how is the church going to be restored? How are we going to get to Zion? <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's wow. That's why. And so, yeah, it's a difficult thing, isn't it? You'd rather believe in quick and easy Jesus. <laughs> no fuss, no muss.